what it says to the outside world is one thing but it has to face the reality that it cannot keep doing this for maybe couple of decades more so uh, beyond that there will be severe restrictions on what companies can do and that will hurt the stock market the mm. moment you say tomorrow if the if the government says all companies must recycle the stock market's prices will fall for many stocks because they you can see how many small small you uh, know plastic uh, you know sachets they are all if the company says no more sachets the government says no more sachets from tomorrow sales will drop profits will drop consumption exactly. drops exactly yeah. so that, so we don't have much scope there that is where i think investors should be a little more careful so caution with optimism i think that is the right mix a new week a new episode of let's get rich with patu how are you doing patu doing great i'm looking forward to this one uh we're recording this the morning after the interim budget was announced uh, everybody reporting about how it was the shortest budget speech ever uh with elections in mind um if we could quickly in 2 or 3 minutes but to perhaps summarize what happened pretty much nothing happened as far as we are concerned is what i'm i'm hearing uh and then perhaps <laughs> i have one follow up question about about the bond market lighting up i i want to understand what that headline is but what do you feel about personal finance and taxes uh i think it's uh, wrong to say nothing happened uh, well the economy is growing uh, the government is trying to boost the economy so in that sense it will affect us uh one way or the other positively hopefully but in terms of taxes i mean we are like olivers we are always wanting more wanting more and that's not going to happen all the time and uh, so i i i for one i'm delighted nothing happened because i think f- uh, this is the first time for a long time have not written a single article on budget day on budget day i usually write five or six articles you know mm. uh, back to back to back so i'm so relieved i after the budget i just went to take a nap so i'm just i'm i am just so happy so is it right to say that in terms of how we look at taxing uh, taxation for our investing uh, nothing really changes and till when does nothing change till march 31st 2025 see uh, nothing changes uh, even if they make changes i mean that's how i view it because investing ideas and uh, the basic ideas of how we invest the budget does not really affect us it's just that we we assume it does and the media makes us also believe if we get suckered into it uh, yes there will be a, a main budget in june or uh, july depending on when the government announces it or the new government announces it but i don't think it's going to make a big difference anyway right and one last question guys this episode is not about the budget if in case you're wondering and perhaps i should have said that right at the start it's about a very interesting thing with regard to india with regard to the rest of the world and and how money grows around the world thanks to a very interesting question from one of our listeners we'll get to that too. one final question about the budget but too i saw headlines like s- saying the bond market or the or bond street lights up basically saying if i delved into the first few lines of that uh, our fiscal deficit is lower than we expected 1 lakh crore less of borrowing therefore interest rates are expected to go up since we were talking so much about you know having half of our portfolio in debt does that affect us in any way is there is there good news in store of higher rates through our long term bonds etc um, i don't I, these things happen i mean there's always going to be noise on the street and all that uh, but i don't uh, the way i see it i i hope interest rates don't go up anymore they will uh, they sort of hit the top plateau and um, i don't think it's going to make a big difference to us all right so with that let's just dive straight into an amazing question we received uh and we have to thank vignesh m 1995 for this but to do suggest suggest i read through it first so uh, the listeners understand what this question is about and then we try to unpack it because it started pattu thinking a lot and it's very rare that a listener question excites pattu because he's seen it and heard it all uh and so let's dive straight into it let me read it out as quick as i can what is the probability about a particular equity market in brackets just the index will perform well which means beating inflation in the long term everywhere i look i can see all the examples taken only from the us and india but what about other equity markets and what about uh, what is a guarantee that it won't happen in india and the us or what is the probability of that happening for example yeah. in india or us but to if i can just read through a little more uh, he's given a few examples right uh, Hang Seng, so Hong Kong, 16k in 
and 16k again in 2023 zero return he's given some more examples and you guys can find his comment on our page as well but that started a very interesting thought process are we very lucky to be in india patu uh, so that you know our money can grow quite impressively while we sleep and there are much fewer opportunities around the world than we expected um it's all it all depends uh, i think the people uh, countries uh, europe uh, the west australia others they had the early mover advantage and uh, their economies have uh, have already grown and some businesses have saturated some have not and so the potential in the stock market is lower for them the um, okay let me answer very specifically to some of the questions and then we will come back sure. to this so the first question he asks is what is the probability that a particular equity market just the index will perform well uh, beating inflation in the long run no idea that's the answer that's mm. the simple answer we cannot assign probabilities to each and everything i mean we should understand uh, when to use a probability and when not to use a probability we can't use probabilities here see if i have a uh, a die yeah uh, six sided die i know that i'm going to get only one of those six faces when i six faces on top when i throw it so i know all the possible outcomes and therefore i can assign a probability so we're going to get only one of those six possibilities when we throw a die so i know all the possibilities and therefore i can assign a probability one by six but that's not the case in the stock market we don't know what all the uh, what the future holds we don't know what what kind of probabilities are we can look at the past and say that's the minimum risk i should expect but that's about just it i mean you can't do anything more so you cannot assign probabilities of the market doing well or market doing bad or anything so the i mean if i have to be absolutely open minded about it i have nothing to sell i no conflict of interest then the answer is no idea hmm. then he says i can see all the examples are taken comfortably from the us and india everywhere um what about other equity markets first of all the indian stock market history is extremely short yes. we have data of, uh, of the sensex from 1979 but that's not actual traded data the traded data of the sensex is only from the mid 80s 85 86 or so uh if you look at the nse the nifty 500 has got data from 98 and the nifty from 99 or so if i'm not wrong so that's just i mean uh it's just a few decades that's like 30 40 years old that, that that's nothing if you look at us stock market data the us stock market data uh, is from 1870 you cannot uh, use a spreadsheet for uh, dates beyond 1900 hmm. right Sp- spreadsheet data starts from 1st january 1900 so if i look at that uh, then i can uh, show you we can look at the some, some of the slides i have So this is the uh, S&P 500 total return, and that's from 1900 all the way. I think just about a year or so before, but doesn't really matter too much in that scale. So uh, if I want to sell equities, I can say, oh, look at the U.S. market. It has seen wars. It has seen depressions. It has seen oil crises. It has seen terror attacks. It has seen all kinds of uh, conflicts and troubles and so on. But yet the stock market has zoomed up. but is that really true if i uh, do a, a rolling sip analysis that is uh, a dollar uh, cost averaging analysis over 15 year periods uh, over this from 1900 to 2021 2022 i'll get something like 1300 300 more, more than 1300 data points that's I'll, i mean so each of those dots there so there are 1333 dots and each dot is a 15 year rolling sip return and look at those returns they are i mean they just move up and down there are some data you can see some data points touching zero there exactly i was about to ask about that so those are places where the returns are actually negative uh, uh, the uh, the spreadsheet can't calculate xirr for those points so it just assigns as an uh, as a zero so you can see how much it has moved up and down and um, if you ask people what is the average us inflation they will say 3% 4% roughly it has been roughly like that of course it has moved up and down uh, from period to uh, short, short chunks of time it has moved up but on an average it has been that you can see if somebody expects 5% 6% 7% from the stock market they're not always going to get it mm. 
sometimes they're going to get more sometimes they're going to get less so just because an economy has grown just because a country has developed the actual um american dream idea started after the first world a uh, second world war when all the american soldiers came back home and that's when the growth really kicked on and where there are low interest rates people could borrow uh, make grow uh, create their own businesses etc and so on but that doesn't really reflect here so quick question patu if you take it from 15 to say 25 year rolling returns does this graph change drastically or is it still up and down you can uh, i have done rolling returns for 30 years or so it, it nothing changes it it wow, is always it cyclic. is very got it it is always cyclic you mm. you can never say i am going to i am guaranteed of this much minimum return from the market you so there's definitely some luck involved absolutely there's yeah. a lot of luck that's the that's why you should hedge your bets with asset allocation diversification we you know goal based investing and so on so uh so even in the us it is not a, a you know fairy tale picture people take the us because it's convenient the data is you know large uh, amount of data is available therefore they take it so it's not true if you look at the indian uh, data the corresponding indian data if you look at the sensex again you can say oh it's uh, we have seen all sorts of scams uh, the harshan mehta scam this scam that scam uh again uh, a war and uh, uh, because of the nuclear blasts we were you know uh, uh, isolated etc all that the stock market has grown yes but if you look at again the corresponding rolling returns chart compared to 1300 data points this is just 359 data points so you really cannot say much by looking at the past and say i'll get that much return and again you can see that the returns in the 90s were very very high yeah and then it has come down and you are yet to see those cyclic behavior and because it's so it's it infancy it's, yeah. right it's always precisely 40 years absolutely 44 years 45 years so uh the the point is we really can't tell based on this and uh what is the guarantee that it won't happen in the us that is whatever happened in uh, the shanga index the hang seng index or what is happening in european stock markets and so on we have no idea there is no guarantee nobody can offer you guarantees and i don't get this idea why people want guarantees in the stock market when there are no guarantees in anything that we do in life uh, just because you are in you join a school doesn't mean you're going to get marks there's no guarantee there's no guarantee just because you've chosen a career you're going to do well just because you get married you can look all kinds of horoscope matching etc that doesn't mean your marriage is going to do well there are no guarantees in anything we do in life but yet people want guarantees in the stock market and mm. this is bizarre i mean they will drive uh, on the wrong side of the road without wearing a helmet with a mobile phone on their neck talking and driving but talking about say, the stock market <laughs> they want though if you ask them to invest in the stock market they'll say it's too risky yeah that they are taking huge risks with their lives and they say i want guarantees from the stock market you can all you can ever do in life is ask yourself whether something has a reasonable chance of success or not and i think there's enough evidence to point out and we will talk about that that there is reasonable chance of the indian equity markets doing well that is not a guarantee right if i can go to the next slides uh, and if you want to talk us through that patu yeah so um i did a study a detailed study on japan um some time back that's because uh, people like the person who had asked this question and i'm very uh, um uh, surprised that he did not mention japan in his comments people always say oh look at japan japan has not grown for uh, since the 1990 i think the market has gone down and um so you must look at it in uh, in context you must look at the economic data so uh, in these graphs the red red curves represent japan and the black uh, the indian ones you can see the gdp mm. uh, per capita yeah and you can see how the japanese gdp is so much higher Th- this was taken couple of years back so it is only up to 2020 data but the gist is the same even today and the the bottom graph is the same thing in in logarithmic uh, charts and you can see there's a huge difference between the, the two countries and you can n- note that the uh the gdp peaked 
close to the time when the stock market started you know becoming sideways becoming falling falling down and so on there's really no uh, growth there because japan is an extremely small country the population is not growing and therefore uh, i mean if i if i'm starting a business that covers all of japan there is a certain amount beyond which i cannot grow absolutely your customer base has ended yeah i will get it will yeah. get saturated and if you look at the next graph this is the household consumption of course how uh, it's 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 measured it's, i mean I, i will leave to the readers to read through it market value of all goods etc etc and so on. it's of course it's a very approximate way nobody is going to say it's the right but but if you look at the household consumption uh, again japan is in red that's very high uh, the indian household consumption average consumption assuming it's accurate it's very difficult for a uh, country of the size of india to you know estimate average household consumption but if you take that seriously for a moment you can see this we have a lot more uh, you know space to catch up and the moment the household consumption started you know oscillating the stock market also started oscillating the stock market started falling so it's it's very important to understand household consumption is linked to gdp and also to the stock market you yeah with respect to india there's a clear upward move since 1993 perhaps that's when everything moved opened up and and there's a lot of space left to yeah. move there's a lot of yeah. scope for growth and you can see the the population of japan is in red the right axis is the japanese uh, because you can't plot them in the same scale because india trumps in the population and look at the uh, japanese population it's it's been saturating it's saturated and it's actually fallen down so japan is not a young country there are a lot of old people in japan india has got millions of everybody it's got a lot of old people it's got a lot of young people the population is still growing so if i look at it as a business i mean uh, from a business point of view if i want to open a business that's in pan india look at my scope i can grow for the next 20 30 40 years and i i think uh, studies show that uh, at least until 2060 or 2070 the population will grow and then only start slowly plateauing uh you can that this is the case the plateau is the case for most european countries exactly yeah so that is one of the reasons why the stock market is not you know going because if you want the stock market to grow the market needs some sort of sentiment it needs some hope that at least in the near future the, the earnings will be high and for that the companies should uh, you know operate in a country where there is a stable democracy and where there is no war uh, there is no internal conflicts of any kind and the there must be a, a government that uh, gives it some sops you know gives its uh, you know uh, uh, motivation for it to grow uh, less tax etc tax breaks etc etc and we have all of that in india our i mean i was taught to believe in the 1980s and the 1990s that every problem in india in two steps yeah. you blame the population that is not true our population is our biggest asset and that is why uh, you know we they, betting on indian equities is a reasonable bet it's quite reasonable i'm not saying uh, it's it's a guarantee because we don't have oil we we depend on oil from the middle east mm. and uh, we have a very tricky foreign policy we have uh, china you know uh, they're breathing down on us they may fund pakistan at any time Uh, so it there's a it's we are in a tricky place geographically also and any kind of conflict in the middle east will affect us we can have a conflict of our own uh, with, with china pakistan again we don't know what the future holds and there can be political scandals if there is a political scandal and the there is no clear majority uh, in the next or any future election then all of this will affect the market yeah so Uh, you know it's not a guarantee but it's a reasonable bet that's what i would and also say. i guess what's going in our favor but too is and for the stock markets that are doing well is you need some critical mass you need buyers and sellers right and and i think it seems like we've come to a state where our markets are doing really well because everyone's interested in them right from across the borders around the world as well as retail investors is that also a factor No, that is more. Um, I a would say. A result of yeah. No, that's more ephemeral. It, that's more like a st- like fashion. It'll come in and out. The number of participants, mm. but 
there should be sustainable good news for the stock market to go. There will of course be periods of bad news. There will be crisis somewhere. There will be war here and there. Our oil, uh, you know, uh, tab bill will increase and so on. But that is all fine. That's going to cause problems, uh, you know. But over the long time, uh, uh, I think every, every, things are looking good because of the extremely high scope for growing. In fact, um, I was looking at for this and there is an Australian report by the Department of Foreign Affairs and Trade. It was commissioned by the Department of Foreign Affairs and Trade and they wanted to know how big India is growing and so on. Can they work with India? And according to them, they say India accounts for 18% of the world's, almost 18% of the world's population. Okay. That's a lot. But it only accounts for 7% of the world's economic output. So there's a lot of scope for yeah. growth. And uh, I, there's a wonderful statement that, uh, there. It says, uh, how well India will grow depends on how effectively it harnesses and rewards the efforts of its greatest natural assets, its people. Mm. So uh, I think it's I think we're going in the right direction in that. Of course, of course, there are two challenges the way I see it. Um, one is we should not allow uh, the poor getting poorer. Yeah, the rich will always get richer. You can't stop them. They they have had the early early mover advantage. Uh, they were on a high. I mean, uh, at a higher end of the uh, growth curve. They will always get richer. You can't stop that. But are you going to leave the poor people behind? That is where uh, the government, I, I think it's doing the right thing. That we have to have a growth in infrastructure. There has to be a significant you know, investment in human resources to ensure uh, what, uh, what people, the economists may call as the uh, middle income trap. I think yeah. we should not fall into the middle income trap. So the middle income trap is basically... Uh, when the economic growth is fueled by cheap labor and resources, resource availabilities, that's all fine. But after, at some point, the labor becomes more and more expensive with time because there is inflation in all goods, everything, services, etc. But then the economic growth, if that becomes unsustainable, then you get into some kind of a uh, trap where your uh, national income, gross national income doesn't grow. Currently, our gross national income uh, according to the World Bank, is about uh, $2,390. This is 2022 data. Is that per year or per month? Per year. Per, per year, I think. Yeah. yeah. Per year. Yeah. <laughs> so, that, so, the World Bank classifies us as a lower middle income country. In order to become an upper middle income country, this gross national income per year should cross 4,000 USD. Halfway there. Or a little more. So, we little more than that and uh, I would say uh, the last thousand dollar increase has taken about 10 years right uh, even if you say that the next thousand dollar increase or the next thousand five hundred dollar increase sooner will, right maybe, maybe sooner hopefully yeah. because it grows it exponentially yeah. grows maybe 15 years hmm. at best 20 years so uh, so and then the higher income, to become a higher income country, you have to, it has to cross greater than $12,000. So that's going to take a even yes. longer time, a couple of decades, at best three, four decades, maybe. So I would say at, at least the people watching this podcast, listening to this podcast, I think they have a very reasonable chance of making good money in the stock market. Maybe it may not be the case for their children, their children's children. Uh, that's fine. You can't worry about everything in the world. At, at, I mean, there's a reasonable bet. Again, I want to point out that just because there's a reasonable bet, that is not a guarantee. Yeah. Because there can a lot, lot of unknown things can happen. I believe our strongest uh, danger, aside from uh, oil crisis, pol political scan scandals, conflicts, wars, etc., is climate change. You said this often I, it's a, in the past. Uh, yeah, it's a, I, it's a personal belief. I'm, I mean, I don't have data to prove it. I think, uh, uh, like I said, the other countries have had the early mover advantage. They have, you know, destroyed the environment. Uh, they started doing the destruction and then they've handed over the labor to other countries, including us, to destroy our own environments and so on. But there, ha there has to be, there is not much scope there. There may be a lot of scope for the country to grow. 
but in terms of how much can you destroy how much can you, you know go on without a plastic recycling policy we don't have a proper policy of plastic recycling anywhere in the country or simple uh, stuff ex- but to like keeping green spaces green keeping them open I- i'm facing this crisis exactly where i live right now in bombay we have probably the largest open space where i live and the uh, you know the lease has expired so it's going back to the co- government and they just want to build on it or create and bi- it's crazy because it's such a big sink for when rainwater floods etc and now if you build on it it just i wish we had the mentality of just letting nature be and instead of constructing constructing and eating into so simple stuff like that yeah it really affects us on a daily basis and you're absolutely right so that that's going to so the all this stock market growth is almost always going to come at the cost of destroying nature destroying our uh, greenery uh, you know making more animals extinct or you know uh building more highways etc so that is the problem we don't have much scope there so if the country i mean india is already forced to you know talk about uh less coal emissions and so on it's it has its targets and so on but uh what it says to the outside world is one thing but it has to face the reality that it cannot keep doing this for maybe a couple of decades more so uh beyond that there will be severe restrictions on what companies can do and that will hurt the stock market mm. the moment you say tomorrow if the if the government says all companies must recycle the stock market's prices will fall for many stocks because they are, you can see how many small small you uh, know plastic uh, you know sachets they are all if the company says no more sachets the government says no more sachets from tomorrow sales will drop profits will drop consumption drops exactly yeah. so that, so we don't have much scope there that is where i think investors should be a little more careful so caution with optimism i think that is the right mix or a great way to end the episode as well vignesh i hope your question is answered optimism with a little bit of caution and i just feel so reassured listening to this episode about being in india and the opportunities are laying in store for us but one googly kind of question but to to end this episode right not not only because you say climate change may affect us 20 years 30 years down the line and that effect can be seen on the stock market and giving the example of say the hang sang where the last 20 years has led to zero return in both these instances the problem may be in index investing but i'm sure in the last 20 years people in hong kong have made a ton of money investing in individual stocks right so perhaps some what i'm angling at is when you're not seeing that potential and when you're in a time of trouble of say 20 30 40 years for example you said our children and their children perhaps won't have these opportunities that we do does then investing philosophy change um see it's always it's very hard to evaluate that i mean there are many stories even in our uh, indian stock market we had our own lost decade in the 1990s mm-hmm. after the harshal mehta scandal uh, all the way down to 2002 2003 the stock market the sensex was flat yeah but there are stories of people making money in individual stocks yeah but uh, i mean that's more anecdotal rather mm-hmm. than you can't evaluate that you can't evaluate individual stock portfolios so i would say that y- yes i mean if the going is bad for a couple of years what do you do still do you still wait for the market to recover it's a very tough question uh, to answer so that is why i believe that you should have a a variable equity policy i have talked about this before you regardless of what happens on the market you keep reducing your equity gradually you start mm-hmm. with 60 70% you every 5 years or so you step it down every 10% or you even gradually decrease it by 2 3% every year that from what i have seen is a reasonable hedge against this kind of poor sequence of uh, returns risk but to can i ask a personal question you, yeah yeah in 2008 what where did you find the gumption the confidence the you know to keep investing in a flat market and it went on for 5 years no, right I we're talking about 60 months of persisting with your with your theory see when i first started yeah so when i first started it was during the fall but i was i was just investing 1500 bucks I minute mean, there was uh, really nothing uh, even at that time it was not much for me compared to my salary i was just trying to you know get my feet a little bit wet the problem started uh, during 2010 and 11 that's when the market had recovered 
right and i still saw my money was in red because i started late mm-hmm. and after that it but the uh, i mean that's what i keep saying we have to use emotional logic first you must ask yourself do i have enough time for the recovery and at that time yes i had like almost 3 yeah. decades of uh, service left and so I, there was not much i i had to worry too much about it and i also uh, thankfully invested a little more during that time so the question is do i worry about this and pull out and go to the safety of fixed income where my returns are guaranteed but my failure is also guaranteed <laughs> or do i say look i value my financial independence and there's enough time for me to fight this risk and i stuck on that's that's all there is to it so would you say what you had in your favor was one it was the start of your journey so amounts were lower uh but how do you still for then 5 years with a flat market with not much movement continue to have that confidence because everyone's going to be in that similar situation so what was that mental thought process i think the one the main thing that helped me is i don't read anything I don't. Uh, sometimes I don't even read read what I write. If you ask me a few months, I I, I don't remember it. Mm. I think you should not. I I think you should go on an information diet. This is extremely important. Uh, that we should stop looking for information from here or there. What does this guy say? What does that guy say? What's happening? Stop reading papers. That is the. Uh, I mean, I don't. I still don't read anything uh, except that when I have to. uh for free fin cal which i sometimes hate i don't if the the less information you have the more uh calmer you can be and it's better you can stick to your plan because there's a lot of people to trip up your uh, you know plans fair answer all right uh on that note patu thank you very much uh, confidence in india um grateful to be in india uh and we'll see you on the next episode of let's get rich with patu please keep writing in as you saw uh, how well the episode last week did with divakar we really love those episodes patu and i love talking to people talking to you answering your questions and you know, hearing about your experiences and till we see you again next week patu thanks so much it's i don't even realize how 30 plus minutes have passed so thank you for that take care bye bye